About a month ago we decided to quit our huge over 14,000 days Minecraft world and start a completely new one from zero. Today we are gonna test the limits on how many farms it is possible to build in just a couple hundred Minecraft days. After generating like 20 different Minecraft worlds we finally got the one we liked. So welcome to the new Schalkecraft survival world, back at square one but this time with a plan in mind. This side of the mountain is gonna be our new main place and right next to it is the world spawn. So when we die, you respawn pretty much right at your home. It should be enough flat area to fit all of our builds we want close by, like the storage room, super smelter and some farms. First we built ourselves a small house just to store some items and somewhere we can sleep. If you ask why we made a new world instead of just updating that one to 1.18, then there are three reasons actually. First of all, a lot of the area generated there is old and that means there are no mountains, no cool caves and so on. Second of all, our storage room area lags really bad. We have spent a lot of time there and built a lot of different things. I guess somehow we glitched it out and we haven't been able to fix it. And the third reason, we just really miss starting out again. I think it is super refreshing just to close off our last journey and start from a clean, flat, wait, not flat, curvy sheet after the huge 1.18 update. While exploring around in caves, we found the zombie spawner. I think this will be a good source of XP for the start. And so it was. It became the first farm that we built, a simple spawner XP farm. The next thing should be an iron farm. Started off by Rob <coughs> bringing some villagers near our base and breeding them for our future trading hall. Once there were enough of them, we built the iron farm itself. Iron farms are easy to build as always and this small one should make us enough iron for even bigger projects in the future. The trick is to build it close to your base, so the iron farm works pretty much all the time. Our next goal would be to go to the end and kill the ender dragon. Using the diamonds we had and the zombie XP spawner farm, we managed to put together a pretty decent set of armor. This should make the fight easy. Thanks to us killing the ender dragon 20 times in the last world, this feels easy. I know exactly what to do. And done, very nice. This opens up the opportunity to build another farm, the enderman XP farm. This will help us enchant more than just two sets of armor and also make ourselves some good tools. Honestly, it's just amazing how easy it is to build and the XP it produces. Next two farms we are going to build are really common, but also useful. First one being the sugar gain farm with the flying machines. Plan is to build it inside the mountain, so we started our digging. The items are being collected using hopper mineguards down below and taken into a nearby chest. Have a look here already producing us some sugar gain, which means we now have infinite sugar or paper. We are gonna mostly use it for paper though. The farm that goes along with the sugar gain farm is the creeper farm. With those two items we can make fireworks, which we will need really soon. As both of them are ready now and we crafted some firework rockets, it's time to go and explore some end cities for the elytra. This walking on the ground type thing is not really my vibe. After some running around, we found an end city with the ship, got the Elydra for one of us and then just flew around until we had Elydras for the both of us. Finally life with wings. This feels like a game I was used to playing. The next step is to collect a lot of magma blocks. If you know Minecraft farms well, you should know what we want to build next. It's of course the gold farm by El Manga. Gonna be our first build above the nether roof. I remember this farm being pretty hard to build, but now it seems like a simple project. After doing this, now we have a more nearby place where we can collect some XP and get gold as a bonus item. Oh yeah, talking about the gold, we can even use this to make golden carrots. But we don't really have an automatic carrot farm, just this farmland which is more of a decoration piece. So let's build a village automated carrot farm. The farm's location was chosen to be under the field itself. And since we want more than just one villager here, we made it a lot bigger. There are gonna be a total of 8 villagers, 4 of them farming as carrots and the other 4 farming wheat. I am pretty happy with the layout of this thing, it came out way nicer than I thought. All the crops are transported into this chest here, 
to make our lives even easier. And the entry to this is the greatest thing ever, just a random small door right over here. The next farm is a slime farm. This thing works the best when built under the ocean and this is exactly what we did. Not much is needed except some digging beforehand and then placing some obsidian blocks to create portals. They die on the nether side and this is how it works over here. This was a really quick build and finally we can have slime blocks or a lot of sticky pistons. Since now we can visit the end more often with our elytras, we should decorate the end entry room. We probably need to tube sand at some point, so let's integrate it with the sand tuber. Digging out a lot of the area to make it into one big room. Then adding the glass floor with a lot of layers and making all the walls look pretty again. This sand duper can be activated by this lever here, and it works great. The next farm we wanna cross off our list is the wool farm. Again, we thought of using the hills to our advantage by building it partly in there. Above it is just a small roof and we are gonna input one of every color ship. And since this is built right next to the storage room, eventually we will have plenty of wool from each and every single color. Another block that is available for our future projects. If you haven't understood by now, then all the farms we are building are just to get our survival series back on feet. So we make all the farms necessary to continue doing huge builds and projects. But right now I think we should do a trading hall. And something new design wise, trying not to duplicate anything from our old world. The trading hall will be a place where we have villagers for all kinds of books, like unbreaking tree, mending, efficiency, protection and so on. Also some villagers that trade us diamond tools and armor, so we don't have to spend our mind diamonds on that. And of course every single one of them will be made into costing just a single emerald. The new design we did looks really nice in my opinion, starts as a single corridor that then splits into two sides. I spent like half an hour making all of these trades into one emerald and this is now a fully functional trading hall. The zombie that helps me do all of this is right back there as well. We should also get us some beacons, at some point we definitely need them. But to get those we need nether stars and to get those we need to kill the wither. But to even spawn the wither we need wither skeleton skulls. So we gotta start by building a wither skeleton farm. The design we chose was by Ian X04 and just because of the simplicity. This was a super easy build and supposedly will make you a hundred wither skeleton skulls per hour. After we made the spawn platform and some portals, it should be all done, so let's test it out. Okay, it does work really well, been killing the wither skeletons for like two minutes and already have three heads. So we stayed afk here for a bit of time, then used those skulls to kill some withers Trapping them under the bedrock and just killing them. Easy. Let's do a pretty important farm next, the Shalkrishel farm. And already we need to use our sand tuber to make the glass for this farm. After smelting that, we can now start the build. This farm also includes the automatic system that puts in a new shulker when one happens to die. So we only need to transport in one shulker into this farm and that's it. Once the farm was ready, we went to shulker hunting. There are a lot of tips on how to make this a smooth process. Making the railway back to our spawn in the game. Spawn can be found by using your compass and seeing where it points at. Then we need a railway from the end obsidian platform up to the exit portal. Just placing a couple blocks on the side of the rails will make the shulker go through the portal. And actually on the end city. The railway will need to lead from the bottom house to the gateway portal. Got the shulker into the first minecart and off he goes. Through the first portal and then to the middle portal here. And here the shulker is, in our world spawn. Just getting him into a minecart and then the furnace minecart pushes it. The shulker is in the farm successfully, starting it and then seeing if the nether side works. 
It does seem to work just like intended, very nice. Another farm completed. Building the Shalker farm used up a good chunk of redstone and we pretty much have none right now. So time to build a redstone farm, but not with witch huts. Instead we are gonna build a raid farm. This raid farm here is not the regular one. It's a stacking raid farm, which means the raids will spawn continuously every second or so. When fully ready, it will make us like 50,000 emeralds per hour and about 5,000 redstone dust per hour. Stacking raid farms are super useful and overpowered. After the build, we needed to input 5 villagers and it was done. To start, I can grab the bad omen from this nearby villager outpost. We built it close by for this exact reason. And then just starting the raids. Amazing farm and another one off the list. So far we have a house to live at, a zombie spawner xp farm, a small iron farm, sugar cane farm, creeper farm, enderman xp farm, gold xp farm, carrot and wheat farm, slime farm, the sand duper machine, a wool farm, trading hall for some cheap books, wither skeleton farm, shulker shell farm and a raid farm. Pretty good progress for starting out, but what we are going to do next, you will see next week. See ya! Bye!